We are aiming to set up a proteomics core here in, in the QSTP, and it will be run by a company called QST Proteomics. And our mission is to set up a, a world-class facility with a full range of tools. It's going to have training central to its mission. We're going to be frontline research. Our job, we, our, our mandate is also to produce new proteomics technologies. That's something we're very comfortable with. And one of the ideas underlying Delta Dot technology is it's future-proof. We have a label-free approach, which is unique and highly patented, one which allows you to miniaturize and speed up the separation process. Part of our job here in Qatar is to actually build new technologies based on that simple paradigm. We're going to aggregate and optimize new technologies into the proteomics initiatives. And working with stakeholders here in Qatar, we hope to develop panels of biomarkers using our core facility uh, and using their clinical expertise. The Proteomics Central Labs can act as a regional service laboratory, one which will service our colleagues in the stakeholders, but also within the region. And we're also very excited by the prospect of doing new initiatives like vaccine development, uh, therapeutic development, and we aim to do that in due course. Our, our mission, as you've seen in the, in the morning's talks, is to obviously help to contribute to the knowledge infrastructure and create sustainable wealth. This is a picture of where we aim to be, and we want to ask, answer the following questions. How can we address Qatar's healthcare needs? How can we add to the existing stakeholders' missions? How can we contribute to the rapidly growing biotech sector? And it's not just a job for Doha, it's also a job for the entire region. How can we ensure maximum benefit to Qatar through building alliances with world-class organizations and extending our existing networks to the needs of Qatar? So Delta Dot is the company I founded back in uh, 2000, and it's the market leader. We actually have achieved that vision. We have to find a new one. Um, I think we're the only company doing label free, so it's quite easy to be the market leader in it. We span it out in 2000 from Imperial, and it's a combination of particle physics, which is what I do, and molecular biology, which is what my brother does, and you'll be meeting him tomorrow. We have good patent portfolios, and we are good at building instrumentation. One of our problems has been the label-free approach is what people need in a wide range of applications, drug discovery, biotech, diagnostics, etc. And more recently, for the last two years, in vaccine development. And some of the, the best work we're doing is in co-development programs, working with DARPA-funded and Defense Threat Reduction Agency programs in North America. So we're working with stakeholders here to ensure that we meet the needs. And we're also talking with people who may come to Qatar to ensure that we meet future needs as well. Label-free intrinsic imaging, which is our core approach, says that you don't really want to put a chemical when you're looking at a, on, onto the protein, when you're looking at the protein. And so what we've done is use particle physics signal-to-noise reduction, oh, sorry, improvement uh, tools, so as to allow you to separate out a protein without using a chemical or radioactive label and visualize it. So the molecular behavior is not affected by the fluorophore, and you have massive reduced cost of analysis. It turns out also, by removing one of the stages of the process, you greatly reduce the cost of servicing. One of our problems actually in the company is that the pharmaceutical companies to whom we've sold don't want to have service contracts so that things never break down, which causes a very uh, great loss in revenue stream. Our resolutions and sensitivities, reproducibilities are extremely good. I'll just point to one item, that's this one here. Uh, I built the first system back in 2002, and we sold it to Procter & Gamble, and I thought that would be it, and they, they would be buying lots of them. Uh, they, they pointed out that the reproducibility was only about 10% RSD. We got beaten up by Procter & Gamble for three years to make the reproducibility as good as it is now. Quantification is extremely good. As you'd expect, without a label on the system, quantification depends only on the way you visualize without there being any extra source of error from the way the chemical works. I'm of interest at heart, an astrophysicist, and I just point out this is a supernova before and after it explodes, and we see great analogs in the way you see uh, upregulated protein. This is a two-dimensional map. What we're also doing is, by uh, mathematical trickery, getting two-dimensional information from single-dimensional separations so as to make redundant these uh, 1975 technologies. Uh, dimensionality, again, this will be fairly obvious to everybody, I suspect, who's ever done a separation. Uh, Single-dimensional separations 
has a limited number of discrete data. If you get two-dimensional, you can get much more information. But also, you, by looking at the axes and reading off, you get more information about a given separate analyte. If you go to multidimensional analyses, you can get even more <coughs> granularity, but also much more information. That's what drives our approach forward. Why is minimum bias so important? If I understand proteomics, you don't really see proteomics by itself. You have to combine it with other areas like genomics and expression profiling and structural genomics. This is systems biology at its best. Integrating all that information is best done where you don't have individual biases in each of the separation stages which feed into that integration step. If you can minim minimize or, or remove the biases, then the knowledge coming out is that much purer. You can't get to zero bias. That's absolutely not possible in any scientific uh, measurement I know. And that means that in systems biology, particularly, you've got so many domains. This is the list of ohms, genome, transcriptome, proteome, I could find. My favorite is the omeome, which is the aggregation of various ohms. And the way in which you combine all those things together means that if you start out with minimum bias, you can probably end up with minimum bias. And let me repeat, chemistry of labels is inherently bias prone. Latest developments within uh, Delta Dot is working with the Defense Advanced Research Program Agency and the Accelerated Manufacturer of Pharmaceuticals, uh, working with the Defense Threat Reduction Agency with some colleagues here from North America. And our job is to compress the timeline for manufacture of vaccines. We're doing monoclonal antibodies and subunit vaccines. There'll be a, a more uh, comprehensive discussion of this tomorrow. And we're in phase uh, three. Until last night, I thought phase three was building a facility. It turned out it's somewhat descoped from that, but it's one which we're still very proud to be part of. Why do you need analytics in biodefense or indeed rapid vaccine development or indeed the accelerated manufacture of pharmaceuticals? There's two ways in which you can look at this. One is if you're stockpiling Tamiflu, for example, you need to have analytics throughout the process in discovering the countermeasures through deployment after the threat's been detected. The more, I believe, rational response now is to have rapid R&D, rapid process development, rapid manufacturing. So high throughput analytics is increasingly important, and that's what we're hoping to bring, and what will be central to what we're going to do here in Qatar. Also central to what we're doing is the information technology platform, the foundations on which you work. So we actually have to have a seamless integration analysis of all those multi-lab contextual data sets uh, so as to get holistic data mining, again, without biases. The requirements are here, and perhaps the most important analogy is the way in which you combine discrete bits of information to get high dimensionality, good annotation, high degree of structure, and as the Qatar uh, mission is to be part of a, a global scientific community, clearly, uh, web collaboration is going to be part of it too. We also believe that we're working with clinicians and we're very excited by the prospects of working, with, for example, with Wild Cornell, uh, linkage to existing uh, electronic uh, records and, and clinical research systems when appropriate, not before, is going to be a central part to the way in which we do research. We're also working with quite advanced tools. These workflows come from a company called InfoSense who build extremely elegant and very easy to use workflows throughout the whole of the proteomics process. This is my vision of, of how the thing might fit together. We understand there's going to be a tissue bank here. Uh, we are also heavily involved in this side of things. The data handling is all part of it and feeding into the clinical uh, informatics side. All these things have to be integrated from the outset. You can't put an information system together after you put the components there. And these are the various components which will be part of the whole picture of proteomics. <coughs>